In this micro nugget, I'll be talking to you about how to make a VPN connection using SSTP or the Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol. I'm James Conrad. So what you need to do is you need to implement a VPN. Why? Because you want a virtual private network to allow your telecommuters to connect to a file server, let's say, in your internal network and give them the same connectivity that they would have if they were seated at their local workstation in your private network. A problem is you have something in the, in the middle that's going to get in the way <laughs> because there's really no way to connect this client computer out here to this file server unless you use a virtual private network. Essentially what this does is it tunnels through the internet and through your DMZ and into your own network until it ultimately connects to this file server as if you were locally connected. So you do some research and you think to yourself, hey, you know what, I think L2TP or Layer 2 tunneling, tunneling Protocol might be a good solution, so I'm going to ask the networking group to open up ports 1701 and I go into their office and I bring in a big box of uh, Krispy Kreme donuts and, and, and stuff like this and gift certificates thing, and things like this. And they think I'm just being really nice, but what I'm really trying to do is manipulate them. And I say, hey, you know what, since I brought you all these donuts, can you open up port 1701 for me? And uh, with, you know, glazed Krispy Kreme falling off their fingers, they say, oh, no, 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 we're never going to do that again. We opened up a port for you guys last year and then we got hacked and uh, heads rolled and we got all the blame. So they say, no way in the world or we can open up 1701 or any other ports for you guys, because we got in trouble once for that before. Uh, the only ports we're going to have open are the ones we already have, which is 443, for our web server here, because we have HTTPS wor working on this, because that's what we have bound to our e-commerce server. So we have secure online transactions. That's the only port we're going to leave open for you. Because we know that that port's more secure anyway, right? <laughs> well, there's some holes in all of this. But uh, one of the main things we can t gather from this is that we can just say, okay, fine. I guess I won't use L2TP then, but is there still a secure solution that I can use? Yes. You can use Secure S Socket Tunneling Protocol, or SSTP. SSTP as your virtual private network. And what that does is it uses port 443 the same way that you would use if you were to connect to a secure web server. So you don't have to open up any additional ports on your firewall, and you will have maybe another server in here that's your RAS server. And then once you connect to that RAS server using VPN, then you can connect over here, of course, to your internal network, to your file server, or any other resources that you might need throughout your organization. So the rest of what I'm going to show you here is how I would actually do this. Now, because of time constraints with these brief micro nuggets, I've already set all of this up in advance. I'm just going to show you what I did. Uh, what we did, first of all, was we have to come up with a certification authority. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I just used a standalone root certification authority. But of course, in an organization where we have an enterprise going on, we might want to do an Active Directory integrated one, which would also be known as an enterprise root certification authority or some kind of an enterprise CA. Anyway, here it is, and you can see here that I went ahead and set it up, and then I've got some certificates issued, actually a single certificate issued here now, and let's talk about how I did that. This is a little bit of a trick. Also, to make the whole demonstration kind of compact, I have a, do a domain controller, which I don't think we'll need to be looking at here, uh, but we have the same server right here where we're running both certification uh, certificate services, and we're also running RAS. Okay, or routing and remote access services. So on this same server where I installed uh, this CA, I also needed to make a web connection to it. So I went to my, I'll go to the home page here, and you can see I'm connected via HTTPS. And I connect to that particular uh, location. And all I have to do is connect to either local host and then followed by cert server if it's on the same server, or you can do the fully qualified domain name or any other way that you can access it. If there is a certificate there that identifies this, because of course with HTTPS you have to have certificate involved, and, and it's not the exact same name as this, you'll get that message that you sometimes do saying, hey, this might not be safe because the certificate name doesn't match, something like that, depending on the browser that you use. Uh, for this particular thing, we're going to request a certificate. I'll tell you right now, Internet Explorer works best. Um, people tell me a lot of problems with Firefox. I have seen somebody... I think I've seen somebody do it with Google Chrome, but I don't think I'd want to give it a try. I think I'd rather just use Internet Explorer for this one. 
Now, since I hadn't even issued any certificates yet with my certification authority, uh, all I'd really done is to set it up, then I didn't have a certificate to make this connection. Now, in my full series for the 70-411 that I'm recording for CBT Nuggets, I go through this in a lot more detail, but for our brief purposes here in this micro nugget, uh, just be aware of the fact that I created a self-signed cert certificate only for temporary purposes so that I could make this connection. And then what I do is I, quick, I click on Request a Certificate, then clicked on Advanced Certificate Request. Then I clicked on Create and Submit a Request to this CA. Uh, here it's telling me that I have this website trying to perform something on my behalf. Normally that's a security issue that we want to avoid. In this case, since it's in my own intranet and I've configured the zone to a uh, lower level of security because I trust the server more, I'm going to go ahead and click on Yes. Also, you do have to go in and lower security to make this work. Otherwise, the ActiveX controls don't work. I'll talk to you again more about that in my 70-411 series. Then for the certificate request, I need to enter in the name that's exactly the, the name that people will use to connect. So on the virtual private network client on, let's say, my Windows 8 computers, if it's rraz01.nugglelab.com, like you see up here, uh, then I also need to put that here in the certificate that they're going to use. Okay, so I'll just put rraz01. I'm going to capitalize this so I can distinguish it from another one that I've got later on. .nuggetlab. Dot com. Then you can, of course, fill out all of the rest of these things, but what you should fill out as a minimum is the name, and you do have to have that. And it does have to be exactly what they're going to connect to, otherwise they'll get certificate mismatches and, and they won't be able to connect. And then uh, a country or region. The next thing we need to do is to make sure that we're s requesting a server authentication certificate, and then we mark the key as exportable. Okay, and then once that's been done, you can submit this. And I'll just go ahead and go through the rest of this because it's fairly simple and quick. Uh, but on the other side of things over here, we'll have a pending requests in our certification authority where we'll choose all tasks and choose issue. This is the certificate that I just requested in the website. Now I'm going to go ahead and issue that certificate. Once that's been done, I'm going to go back to my home page here. And then I'm going to view the status of a pending certificate request. Now, of course, again, I'm doing both RAS as well as my certification authority on the same server. Uh, if, you're, if you have those on different servers, which is often the case, uh, then it doesn't matter. You'll just switch to those computers and choose, you know, view the status of the request on the destination computer where you're making that request. So anyway, uh, there's my serv server authentication certificate. I click on it. Again, I have to grant permission for this to go. Then I click on install certificate. It's been installed successfully. There's one caveat to that. Since I requested that as a user, it plants it directly into my user certificates up here. And if I refresh the screen, you can see there it is. Now, that's not going to do me much good because it has to be loaded into the local computer personal certificates here. So what I can do is to export this and then import it uh, down there. And when you export it, uh, you need to include the private key. I'm not going to go through all of that right now. It's probably right, you right click on it, you choose export, make sure you include the key, and then you'll be able to import it down here. Now I've already done that for my other certificate. In fact, this is the one I just used for the demonstration to show you how to create a certificate, so I'm going to delete that. This is the one I've already done that before in advance right there. I exported it, then I imported it down here, and you can see, sure enough, there it is. Now real quickly as I go through this, I'm going to go back over to this, actually is where I need to go, and uh, I'm going to specify the authentication certificate here. So I go to the properties of the RAS server, go to security, and then when I go down here so for certificate binding, make sure that you select the, the specific certificate that you want to use to authenticate this server. Okay. Once that's been done, then I can go over to my client over here, the Windows 8 client computer. Uh, there's also a registry entry that needs to be made, which I talked to you about more in my 70-411 series. And this is going to be for a re certificate revocation checking. Uh, but in any case, here I'm going to go to my VPN connection, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on Connect, and I enter in my credentials, and I'll enter in my password. Click on OK, and what do you know? Right now, I am connected. Uh, so that's how I was able to make this connection. Now, uh, to create this connection, there's a number of different ways you can do it. You can do it just kind of by hand here on each local machine, or you can use the Connection Manager Administration Kit, also known as the CMAC. If I go to the properties of this, let me actually, uh, yeah, there we go, view the connection properties, then you can see here that I entered in the prop appropriate name on security. I'm using SSTP. We have other options we could use, but I'm using SSTP there, and we're using MSCHAP here, but you can also, again, of course, use other more secure items, such as uh, protected extensible authentication protocol or PEEP and other methods like that. Well, that's pretty much it for this particular micro nugget. We now see that we're able to create a successful SSTP connection, 
And SSTPT, again, is all done over port 443. And then just quickly before I uh, hang up here, I went over to my RAS server and did a net stat to prove that indeed we are connected via port 443 to my Windows 8 client. In this micro nugget, we talked about how to make a VPN connection using the Secure Socket Tunneling Protocol, or SSTP. We have much more detail about this, as well as many other VPN technologies, on my 70-411 series for CBT Nuggets. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.